Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner. You know, don't you? You know, because that's why you've tuned in. Today I'm joined by Andy from... Whereabouts are you from? Cyprus. Cyprus. Whereabouts in Cyprus? Lilaca. Yeah? Do you like it out there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm from London originally, but I've been out, out here a few years. Yeah, good man. Uh, all right then. Well, we'll go. We'll go straight in with uh, some uh, topics that you probably what you probably been looking at and news in the last couple of weeks. What did you think about the MTK Panorama program last Monday? So that's nearly two weeks ago now. Well, like, like for hardcore fans, it wasn't anything new. Not anything new, but it's made it to the public. The public are aware of, of it now. I mean, I didn't learn anything new from it. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that maybe they should do programs like that when they've got people charged and convicted and things like that? Or do you think it's in bad taste because the gentleman's not been in trouble before? I mean, the guy hasn't even got, not even a parking ticket. No, not got a parking I mean, 10, 10 year investigation, they've got nothing on him. Yeah. I mean, I haven't heard one fighter say anything bad about, about this guy. They love him. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's so many crooks in boxing, in actual promoters, managers. Yeah. And these guys, the boxers love them. They get paid yeah. on time. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a sad state of affairs. Um, let's hope that it all gets worked out and that fighters just get paid and we get the fights that we want. What do you think to that, Andy? Yeah, that's what it's all about, isn't it? The fights. Yeah. Just make the fights. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, moving on. Obviously, you must have seen in the last couple of days the Eddie Hills uh, amateur career plastered all over IFL. Have you seen it? Eddie Hills? Eddie Hearn. Oh, oh Eddie Hearn. My God. Yes. <laughs> That's one, that's one subject that I agree with you 100% and everything you say, Eddie, 100%. Well, it's come out that Eric Guy, this guy who worked for Matchroom for years, he did all filming on amateur circuit. Eric Guy's come out and said, look, Eddie did have two fights, but there were skills bouts. You know that you have when you're 11 or 12, you know, where you have a little bit of a move around. He, yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. he doesn't go down on the... On, your, on an amateur card, there's like a fight. Uh -huh. And uh, you don't mean to say you're not programmed for the show or anything like that. And there's, nobody's declared a winner. Basically, it's just two people moving around it ring and throwing a few light punches. But obviously, he's tried it and he's done it in front of a few people, but there's no footage. There isn't even a photograph of him. There's not even a photograph of him stood in his kit, in his colours, with his teammate or anything. So I'm personally not going to buy into it, but Eric Guy's got a good reputation as being an honest guy. He says he did have two fights, but there's no footage. So if he didn't film it, sorry, if he didn't film it, he couldn't have been there. So, because wherever he is, he films everything. He's known as Eric Guy, the guy with the camera. Mm. So I don't know what to make of it, but I don't know if Eddie's... Feels a bit embarrassed about the story that he told because his version is 4 and 0, free by way of. And he said in the interview, he packed in, he was disillusioned, and then he came back into the sport at 15 to spar professional men. He, the guy is like Walter Mitty, in my opinion. <laughs> so I don't know, but Eddie, you said you were opening fast bowler for Essex, didn't you? Tearing down to wicket. On a 45-yard run-up like Bob Willis, building up ahead of steam like Bob Willis was in 1981 at Edingley. Well, Eddie, are we going to have somebody from Cricket World who you bowl out? Is he going to come on and say, yeah, we, we played a county match, Eddie? Stop chatting, utter pony. I don't know. I just thought didn't I had to... He say, yeah, you go on. Didn't he, didn't he say that Jim McDonnell was with him on these fights? My mate pulled Jim McDonald at the show and Jim McDonald went, do me a favour, mate, Eddie Earn boxing, do me a favour and watch it fight. 
Now, it'd be interesting to see what Jim McDonald says now. But if Jim McDonald wants to root back into boxing, he's not going to upset the man with the golden gun, is he? Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all of them. Listen, like all of them. You know, you ever, you ever seen a load of pigs at a trough? Well, that's what it's like. Pigs at the trough. Like the Boxing Board of Control. Noses in the trough or snouts, should I say. It's utter... I've got my new battery in my bullshit button now. <laughs> uh, all right then, Andy, moving on. What do you think about uh, Big Twinny Gavin McDonald coming back? Uh, fighting for a European title at featherweight. What do you think to that? I mean, um, give him a chance. I, I don't mind the McDonald's. I don't mind them, you know? They don't get paid much. No. They earn everything they earn, you know? They work for it. Yeah. They like a good party, I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll leave that one at that. Uh, there's no wrong with partying, Gavin and Jamie. But uh, just make sure when you're snorting, you don't do it with them ears. You do it with your nose. Because there'd be no left for anybody else if he did it with them tabs. Uh, Felix Cash against Denzel Bentley. Will it happen? Because Frank Warren's won the purse bid. Will it happen? Personally, I don't think it happens. I don't think Warren and Ern can work together. I think Ern might look to take him in a different direction. What do you think, Andy? I think, I think obviously, Warren wants it because he won the purse bid. Um, he, the trainer of um, Felix Cash said that if they lose the purse bid, they will go for the European title. He said it on IFL in an interview a few weeks back. Oh, where did he do? No, uh, the trainer. What's his name? Um, forget the name now. Tony Sims. Tony trainer. Tony Sims, that's it. Tony Sims. Tony Sims said that. Well, they didn't win the yeah. purse bid, did they? Yeah, but when does he actually actually ever win a purse bid? He's won seven purse bids since 1986, December, Matchroom. Is that right? Are they you... try to negotiate a way around. They don't like purse bids because you're not in control. No. Uh, yes, any, yes. That, any, go on. that is the word control. In a purse bid, they lose control. Yeah. Now, what happens with a purse bid is... Any promoter in world boxing can enter a purse bid if you're registered with an affiliated yeah, yeah. body. Anybody. You could be a small guy doing your first show. If you've got a license, you can bid for that fight, let me tell you, right? You can bid. Eddie likes to negotiate around the purse bid because he always says, look, somebody else could win purse bid and you could end up fighting with somebody and end up having to sign options. So let's do it this way. They don't like to go into purse bids. They're accountants by name, accountants by nature. You're not in control of the purse. The purse brings the money for the shows and that. And I can see where they're coming from. They put business first. But don't tell me that your biggest payers in boxing, that you win purse bids because they couldn't even win Dylan White's purse bid against Poole. And he had a billion dollars at the time, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. all right then. Uh, Boatsy Callum Johnson, does it happen? Should it happen? Why won't it happen? It should happen, but it won't happen. For the reason, they can't take the risk. They don't want to take the risk. Yeah. I mean, really, what has he done? It's four years since the Olympics. Four and a half years. Yeah. He ain't done nothing. If you if you if you put him alongside Yard Anthony Yard, who had virtually no amateur experience, it's no comparison. What has he done though, Yard? What has he won? Nothing, but at least he's taking the risk. Yeah, he's taking the risks. You know, <clears throat> there has to be a balance, though, Andy. Do you think Yard? Do you think he might have jumped from? An area level type guy. Do you think he might have just jumped into deep end instead of learning his craft? Do you think Boats is sort of learning his craft, taking his time? I don't know. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're right with Yard. Definitely, definitely. The, the jump was far too high. Far too high. Mind you, Kovalev was there for the taking. 
as Canelo showed. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right there. You're probably right. All right, then. Uh, what next for Chris Eubank Jr.? You know, he gets a, a bad press, but I like, I, I like him. He's a hard worker. He trains hard. He, try, he tries to improve. But I don't know why he's fed with Sauerland. I just don't understand it. I really don't understand that. Man. He's been with everybody else, and there's nowhere left for him to go now. <laughs> Yeah, good point. Good point. Well, he's but, been with Frank Warren, Mick Hennessy, Eddie Hearn, Sauerlands, Al Heyman. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, only yeah, Dennis yeah. Hobson left, isn't there, and Steffi Bull. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, then. Uh, Beefy Smith, is he being treated with respect by Matrium? Oh, definitely not. What a bad move, leave it Frank Warren. Really, I don't understand it. World champion, fought for the championship again. He, he was treating well, Frank Warren. He paid him well. He got the Canelo fight, even though he lost. He got another fight in America. He lost that. But he's done, he's done nothing. He's done yeah. nothing. He had two fights. He had he's with Matchroom, two nothing fights. One in Mexico, I believe. Do you think, Andy, if Billy Joe Saunders doesn't fight Canelo in May, you think his career... Move going to Eddie Yearn was a bad move as well. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, again, again, uh, Frank Warren did fantastic for, for Billy Joe. Two world, two world champs, the second world championship at Super Middleweight. I mean, that was handed on the plate, really. That, that was Frank Warren's negotiating with the WBO. He fought a, a nothing fighter, really, a, um, a vacant belt. Well, he needs the Canelo fight, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, 40 quid pay-per-view, Joshua against Fury. Fury, Joshua, whichever way you want to talk about it. In Saudi Arabia, £40, being back to England. Do you feel that's in bad taste, Andy? Definitely. I think most of the pay-per-views are in bad taste, really, let's be honest. I mean, I could I can talk about this because I get the sewn over here and I don't pay, I, I get the pay-per-views, but I don't pay for them, they're part of the subscription, okay? So pay, some of the pay-per-views they're pointing on, like Dylan White, Dylan White, Rivas, Dylan White, Povetkin, I mean, ridiculous. Now he's got to 40 quid. I don't know how, how the public are gonna take that. Do you feel that the British public knowing the British public as we all do because we're British, do you think that the British public might say, do you know what the fighting in Saudi, look at the human rights issues out there, it's disgusting they're going to have Adam Smith, Matthew Macklin and all the rest at Bean Masons they're going to be coming out with what a great time we've had here, great food, great people, great country, they're going to be masking over all that crap do you feel that it's a little bit like the the George Foreman, Ali, Rumble in the Jungle, where there were, there were uh, mass cleansing out there, weren't there, and villagers mm -hmm. being shot dead and all that kind of thing, but nobody mentioned anything about that when they were there, did they? You think that might be the same thing? They've got bad human rights issues out there, and they're going to expect the British public to actually pay these people's purses when they couldn't wait to fight in England, and they're going over there. How, how do you feel? That, what's your views on that, Andy? Oh, I, I agree, I agree, but um, that matrimonial guy controlled the narrative. And apart from our, the hardcore fans, yeah, what they pull out there every day on Sky Sports, Sky News, non stop, non stop, it gets washed over, I believe. Yeah, and people accept it, they won't even think about that. Yeah, you're probably right. There. Do you feel that? Uh... Eddie will be pushed out there to front it all out and take it all on chin. Because he seems to take a lot of brunt, you know, for everything, but it can't all be down to him. It's a collective decisions by a lot of them, isn't it, really? Bean, Eddie Earn, Ed Robinson. Ed Robinson, we know what your game is with them bonuses you get at Sky. Who else is there? Barry Earn, Joshua's team, Fury's team, Frank Warren, all the lot. Frank Warren was screaming blue murder a few months ago when it was 25 quid, the Ruiz fight. I broke mm. the story about that before anybody even mentioned it. I said it's going to be 25 quid. 
Frank Warren was screaming Blue Murder, we're keeping ours to 20 quid. Have you noticed how they're not saying a word now we're going to be part of parcel of a £40 pay-per-view? Where are you, Frank? Where's your voice now, Frank Warren? Oh, brick top. Well, you've got no I, I mean, for yourself now. Is this just a rumour or is it, have you heard? Oh, it's going to be 40, 40 quid, yeah. Really? Crazy. Absolutely it's a liberty, impressive. isn't it? Definitely. Definitely. All right, then. Do you feel, do you feel that we're having uh, Campbell Hatton forced down our throats already before he's even fought? He's only a young kid. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> these should be on the undercards and coming through like, you know, like his dad did. No. Yeah. I mean, it's just, can he fight? I don't know, can he fight? Do you think they might do a, 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 a Connor Ben with him and just forget British titles and just jump in with an intercontinental belt and a ranking? That's what they're normally doing. <laughs> Bypass. Bypass the risky fights. Get him intercontinental. Get a ranking. Top 15. Do you think he might end up fighting Costa Zeus, son? Down the line? That should be interesting, yeah. Or Connor Ben. A long ben. way down the line. Or Connor Ben. Or any, it could be any of them, couldn't it? Could you imagine Eddie work himself up into a right two and eight, wouldn't he? If uh, Connor Ben fought Atten or Tazu or... It, uh, could you imagine Adam Smith rolling back the years? His dad was a great fighter and so's his son. Look at them, sat at the edge of the ring, Ricky Hatton and Nigel Ben, legend. Rough, tough, rugged, durable, all action, compelling, sizzling. I, I mean, I'm, I'm really that the sky pundits. I mean, something's got to be done about it, really, seriously. The, the bias on this commentary, on the analysis, unbelievable. What did I you mean, think? Glenn McCrory. Go on. Go on. No, you're saying about so Glenn. Glenn. Glenn McCrory was in neutral. He was very good. They got rid of him. Yeah. And they, and they put... All these mentioning of Tony Bellew. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, God. I mean, don't they don't they read the criticism that they're getting? Did you see the Tony Bellew interview where he said he got reprimanded from Sky yes, yes. for being a cheerleader at the Chisora Usek <laughs> fight? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, I thought Tony wanted to disappear and not be seen on TV. Anthony, Anthony, not Tony. Anthony. Anthony. Anthony, <laughs> well, Anthony's been reprimanded for cheerleading for Chisora. Said Derek Chisora won seven rounds to five when nobody gave him more than one or two rounds, and that would have been nice to him, wouldn't it? He lost 10 2, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one sided. So but... if you've got a 10 2 and he's 7 5, how can that be? How can there be a 10, 10 point swing in a 12 round fight? What are they watching? Biased, isn't it? Biased. They see what they want to see. Yeah. Who do you think is the worst pundit out of all the lot of them at Sky? You know, all, all the Bean Masons. Who do you think is the worst out of the lot of them? I'd say Bellew. Bellew is a good pundit when, when he wants to be, when he's neutral. But he's never neutral. <laughs> he's never neutral. When has he been he's neutral been... twice? He's been neutral twice when he first started off and he wanted to be seen as man of the people. Well, since then, he's joined the cult. What they do, they prick the finger, you know, like they do in Mafia. They prick the finger, the good downstairs in the basement, pick the finger and they say, welcome to the family. It's a cult, mate. It's a cult. Definitely a cult. Definitely. I mean, they even got Eddie Hearn doing analysis. I've been a pundit. Sometimes. Have you seen that? Well, the sky's... Yeah, it, it's not as... Uh... <laughs> well, when you've got Adam Smith, right? He's had a Sky Boxing. A Sky have got an exclusive with Macho. You've got Adam Smith narrating the story. That's a conflict of interest, that, isn't it? Of course. That's it's... like me commentating on my, my, my daughter's netball game at school. You know <laughs> what I mean? Something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what do you think about Josh Warrington, Kid Galahad, Yazza Dickens, little 
scenario. What, what do you think about all that, uh, Andy? I think... I, I liked Warrington when he was out playing Warrington, but he showed no loyalty whatsoever. He went to Matchroom to get Eddie to fight the mandatory, which he had. That it was, It's a bit ironic that the reason he was made mandatory, Galahad, is because of Eddie. Eddie petitioned with the IBF to make him mandatory for a second time. And now he signs Warrington and never came about. I don't understand it. Well... If you remember, the first bid were only fifty thousand dollars. That when they when the bid, obviously it's it's a different purse bid now for Galahad Dickens. That's two hundred and two thousand five hundred dollars. But mm. the first purse bid were fifty thousand dollars. Warrington would have got thirty seven thousand five hundred. That's dollars, right? Because all purse bids are done in dollars. Now Galahad has got twelve and a half thousand. That won up won by Al Heyman. I believe this one now, the vacant belt, Galahad Dickens, has been won by MTK. Mm -hmm. So they'll get under and one thousand two hundred and fifty quid each, which is good. But my argument is this: I wouldn't open them blinds there to watch Kid Galahad fighting down here on car park here. I wouldn't open open them blinds to watch him because he's a spoiler. I don't like fighters like that. They don't interest me. I don't like watching that. I don't like watching O'Coley, people like that, Galahad. Not for me. Not for me at all. But if he, if he does it within the rules, good luck to him. But I think he's perfected a style that's very, very hard to beat. Very hard. Yeah, yeah. And I see yeah, yeah. it being a nightmare for Yazza Dickens. Jazza Dickens. Well, I see it being a nightmare for him on the night. And I see him losing a lopsided... Points decision. Mm. Definitely, definitely. What do you What do you think? Well, I, I think Kelly had to win that fight comfortably. Mm. He won it comfortably. Yeah. The, what I understand is Warrington. He's lost his bargaining chip, which was the IBF title. And what's he going to do now? Fight for a, a regular? I don't think it really matters at this stage of game of him now because he's he's at that stage of his career where he's after the business end of it. Carl Zaggy vacated WBC rather than fight Frotch because he wanted to fight in America and get some big paychecks, didn't he? It's the business end of the career. I don't think belts matter now. This is why Fury Joshua shouldn't be a problem to make. You should drop all the belts in the bin and say, why are we paying, I don't know, probably 1.5 million for all them belts in fees? That has to come from both sides. Why not just bin it? Because the fans know it's undisputed. Let's just have the ring magazine belt. That's good enough to overrule all the belts, isn't it? Let's have that belt online. And then no sanction fees for all these sanctioning bodies who I can't stand. I think that's the way forward. Why should they get any money? Any of that lot? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But I think um, Fury doesn't have a problem with the belt. It's jo I think Joshua's obsessed with the belts. I don't think to be called Andrew, I Andrew don't Beauty. think I don't think Joshua wants to uh, fight Fury personally. I don't think he wants it. They can talk a good game, but don't forget they're the same mentality as Eddie Earn because they've been in business together, haven't they? Nine years. They're about money. They're not about legacy. They may preach legacy. They didn't go for a European title, but yet they say it's about legacy and winning everything. You're not going European title. It's not about belts for them. It's about building money and generations of families with money. With Fury, yeah, he likes a pound note, but he's won everything, hasn't he? Won everything. Mm. So he, he doesn't need it, Fury. Everybody knows he's the man, don't they, at the moment? It, plus, he's got, he's got the ring magazine belt as well. So I think they should bin every belt, get rid of them all. It's the poison anyway, all these sanctioning bodies. Poison. Off with their heads. That's what I say, mate. Oh, definitely. Definitely. So, all right then. Well, listen, it's been great coming on. We've had a good half an hour or so. Nice to catch you. Uh, would you like to come on again sometime? Uh, yeah, Andy? yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, bring right. some, some juicy gossip. Yeah, well next, well, next time you come on, jot something, just jot 10 things down. This is what I tell everybody. Who's telling me off at camera? If you jot 10 topics down, you can ask me and we can keep it going. It saves me having to keep it going all the I'll time. I'll do that. It sounds like there's only me. I'll do that. Doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that next time. Yes. If, if you had to yeah. talk in front of this all day, like I do, it's hard to keep it going if you're yeah, on your yeah, own. I understand. 
but we can we can yeah. interact a bit more. So if you jot some things down, you're more than welcome to come on. It's like what I say to everybody: it's Porky Corner at mail.com. Email me, and we can arrange for you to come on. It's no good emailing me saying I want to come on, but I, I don't want to show my face and all that. There's none of that unless I know you. You got to show your face when you come on. That's part and parcel of it. It's all about not hiding behind one of these, isn't it? Keyboard. Don't hide behind these keyboards, all right? This is the only channel that says it how it is. Yeah, well, well we, I'd like to. I'd like to think that. Thank you very much, Andrew. No. Thank you very much. So, all right, well, listen. Thanks for coming on. You've been a good guest, and I'll catch you in a couple of weeks. How's that? Great, great. All right, and have a good day right. out there in Cyprus. Is it warm? Oof, like summer. <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> freezing here, mate. I'm freezing. I know. All right, I you know. take care, mate. Cheers, you pal. Too. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.